Welcome to Women Awakening. I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Welcome to Women Awakening, where we are changing lives in the planet one woman at a time. And uh, we have our special guest today, Ariel Ford, who is our love expert and we all could use a little more love, yeah? <laughs> so we are grateful that you're here. And we are today going to talk about wabi-sabi love. And so she's going to define that for us, and then we're going to dive in. So, so people are probably thinking, what the heck is wabi-sabi, right? <laughs> Crazy name. It's an ancient Japanese aesthetic that honors all things old and worn and perfect and impermanent. And it seeks to find beauty and perfection and imperfection. So I want you to use your imagination. Imagine this great big ancient Ming vase, and it has a long crooked crack down the center of it. The Japanese would take this broken vase, put it on a pedestal, and then shine a spotlight on the crack. They're seeking to find beauty and perfection and imperfection. And all of us are imperfect beings. Now, we've been brainwashed by the media that we should be perfect. Our kids should be perfect. Our careers should be perfect. HGTV wants our homes to be perfect. And the truth is, there is no perfection. It just doesn't exist. We're never going to be perfect. In fact, I think the word perfect needs to be changed to pure fiction. Right? <laughs> and I recently discovered that the Latin root for perfect means complete. It mm. doesn't mean flawless. Mm. So when do we want flawless? When there's a surgeon operating on us, we want flawless. When there's a pilot landing a plane, we want flawless. But in the rest of our lives, we need to embrace good enough. Okay? Mm. We've got to get to good enough. So how does this work in relationship? What happens, most people don't know this, is that every single relationship has a minimum of nine irreconcilable differences. This is the research of Dr. Oh. John Gottman. Nine, at least nine, if not more. So these are things like, uh, you're a spender, I'm a saver. You're always on time, I'm always late. You want sex every day, I want it once every three weeks. I like it hot, you like it cold. I'm the one who's, you know, the disciplinarian with the kids, you're loosey-goosey. You're hot-tempered and blow up and it passes over quickly. I withhold everything and I steam until I blow up. See what I'm going? Mm -hmm, totally. All right, this is normal. This is normal, it's in every single relationship. But we live. Oh, my favorite one. You're the neat freak. I'm the messy one because I'm the messy one in my house and I'm always in trouble for being the messy one. Um, and then it's normal, okay? But we live like something's wrong. If only I could get Cynthia to show up on time, life would be perfect. If only I could get Ariel to clean up the crumbs around the, the toaster, we wouldn't be having these struggles all the time. So first we have to accept what's normal. And then we have to understand that we're not going to change the other person, but there is a wabi-sabi solution to this. And I'm going to tell you a story about people that you know. So Jerry Jampolsky, Diane Serenciani, Love is Letting Go of Fear, right? Mm -hmm. Very famous Course in Miracles teachers, both shrinks, both widely esteemed in our world anyway. So Jerry's about 30 years older than Diane. They've now been married, oh, I don't know, maybe 30 years. And uh, when Diane married Jerry, she didn't know that he had an addiction. Jerry was addicted to poppy seed bagels. <laughs> Every single morning, Jerry gets up before Diane does. He goes into the kitchen he slices a poppy seed bagel in two, which sends hundreds of little black seeds all over Diane's white tile floor. Then he toasts his bagel, 
and then he puts a smear of cream cheese on his bagel, and then he walks around the kitchen eating his bagel, dropping even more black seeds. <laughs> this goes on every single day. And because Diane is so much younger than Jerry, when she gets up an hour later and she goes into the kitchen, her routine every day is the same. She wets a paper towel, she gets on her hands and knees, and then she wipes up all of Jerry's little black seeds. Now, most days, this isn't an issue for her. But one morning, she was in a really cranky, bitchy mood. And while she was wiping up the seeds, she had this thought, oh, what would it take to never have to do this again? And that was followed by the thought, oh, that would mean Jerry's no longer with me. Mm. And she got off the floor and she ran into his office to give him a big hug. Now, from that day forward, every morning as Diane is on her hands and knees wiping up the little black seeds, her heart now fills with love because these seeds mean she has another day to spend with Jerry. Mm. This is wabi sabi love. See, Jerry didn't change. Right. What changed was Diane's story about the seeds, her perception of this bad behavior was changed into something empowering. And I want you to know that Jerry is now either 93 or 94. He is 100% blind. And he's still toasting his poppy seed bagels every morning. And Diane is still wiping up the seeds. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, I think it's important that you're talking about this because I don't, I don't think anyone has told us this. You know, I mean, we have this, you know, person on a, on a white horse that's going to come in and be the prince and pick us up and is going to be perfect and take care of us. And there's not going to be anything wrong. It's just going to be happily ever after. And then you marry this person or you get in a relationship with this person and all of a sudden this stuff is there and you start, it's, you start obsessing over it. Yes. Yes, we do. That's what happens, especially women. We're like, heat seeking missiles for trouble. <laughs> We're always looking for something to fix, something to bitch and moan about. And the truth is there is no happily ever after, but there is happily even after. Ah. Know? So once you learn Wabi Sabi love, you can begin to apply it because um, just like we, we talked about in one of our recent talks about, we just want to be all accepted for who we are. Mm -hmm. Well, that means all of us, you know, the messy parts and the good parts. I'll, I'll tell you another quick Wabi Sabi story, which really illustrates this. I was um, teaching, teaching a workshop on Wabi Sabi one day and they were coming out of an exercise and this one woman stood up and she said, she said, my name's Stephanie and I have a problem even you can't solve. And I said, okay, Stephanie. She said, I've been married to Garth for 16 years and I'm a neat neck, I'm a perfectionist and he's a total messy slob. And the only thing that's keeping us together right now is that he works out of state two weeks of every month. And when he's gone, the house is perfect and pristine and it's my house. And then he comes home and with it hours, it's like a tornado went through it. And I just don't think I can deal with it anymore. So I thought about it and I said to her, well, Stephanie, do you have a dog? She said, yes. I said, does your dog shed? She said, yes. What do you do when the dog sheds? Oh, I get out the vacuum. Okay, Stephanie, do you love your dog? And she got really quiet. And then she said, oh my God, Garth sheds. <laughs> and she saw just like the dog can't do anything about the fact that he sheds, Garth can't be anything but messy. So, of course, I, I was elated. I thought, oh, this is such a great outcome. But it was a one-day workshop. Mm -hmm. A year later, I picked up the phone. I called the promoters of the event that I did. I said, I know there were 300 people there, but there was this woman named Stephanie who's married to Garth, and I must talk to her. And they said, oh, we know who she is. So I got her number. I called her up, and it's like, hey, Stephanie, it's Arielle. Just calling to say hello, wondering how things are with you and Garth. And she said, oh my God, they've never been better. She said, we're so in love. In fact, he quit his out-of-state job 
so he could start an at-home business so we can be together 24 seven. And yes, he's still a messy slob. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, you know, I gotta tell you, um, when I read your book, um, uh, Carl and I were in one of those places, you know, I mean, Carl is like persistent. You know, he, he, he's like a dog, he at phone, but I, I gotta get, gotta get, you know, yeah. and it used to drive me crazy. But then one day I looked back and I said, you know, that persistence is what gets us the highest quality of things because he won't accept less. It's, it's the thing that will ask all those questions that I might not think of that, that gets us, um, taken care of in different ways. It totally changed the way in which I looked at that. And I, right. I'm very grateful for you sharing that. Well, I'm going to tell you why that works when he does it. Okay. So you, you consciously choose to put on rose colored glasses, right? You started looking for what's right about what he was doing that you once thought was wrong. And there's actually been scientific studies done that show that couples who constantly consciously choose to wear rose colored glasses have longer happier more satisfying marriages the reason is they're always looking for what's right instead of looking for what's wrong wow that's incredible so um first of all tell people how they can find you and how they can get wabi sabi love <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a run on them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm easy to find at soulmatesecret.com, soulmatesecret.com. And the book is called Wabi Sabi Love. So thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful for your wisdom and um, it's heart opening. Oh, thank you. It's always fun to talk to you. <laughs> so ladies, um, um, how about starting with Wabi Sabi Love with yourself? and then with your beloved, because you know, uh, you are not broken. You are a masterpiece and let's shine the light on that and have an incredible week, day, and we'll see you soon. Peace and blessings.